Good morning everyone, so I've just woken up and I thought to myself I'm going to film a little bit of a why eat in a day, why eat over a couple of days just because I get asked a lot about my food and I tend to post a lot of food pictures to my Instagram and of things I'm eating and cooking and I wanted to share them with you in today's video. This morning for breakfast guys I've got some smoked salmon with, I'm going to make a poached egg and I'm really liking these very large free range eggs because the yolk is really big and creamy and we homemade some muffins which are pretty healthy and pretty clean so they're made from oats and bananas and some chocolate chips for a little added sweetness you do it This morning's breakfast, a cup of just English breakfast tea, my muffin, smoked salmon with a poached egg, and a bit of lime for a little zing on top. So I'm gonna go eat that now. It's lunchtime now, so this is my new favorite little snacky type thing, and I'm just gonna have like a light lunch. So fro crisp breads, I get them in Tesco's with some cream cheese, sliced vine tomatoes, and a pinch of salt. So it's oat and sunflower seed crisp bread with cream cheese and sliced vine tomatoes with just a pinch of salt on top. Hey guys, for dinner tonight, I have got some chicken thigh mince from the butchers and I'm gonna make two dishes. I'm gonna make some chili con carne using kidney beans, tin tomatoes, peppers, shallots, uh, some spring onions, maybe some coriander and a bit of spice. And the second dish is I'm gonna make some kind of chicken mince keema like an Indian style using spices and onions and coriander again so it's going to be two different dishes just because I can't make my mind up what to make and then we'll figure out what we eat tonight and maybe have some leftovers for lunch but also a little bit for Lola as well for her dinner so guys I'm halfway with the cooking this is the chili con carne type starting to take shape I've got the chicken mince in here with lots of salt and seasoning, oregano, fajita mix, peppers, onion, shallots, quite a lot of flavours in there. And then my chicken keema mince over here, cooking away with onions and tomatoes and some spices and salt. So that's cooking away nicely. I'm just going to add a few more tomato, sorry, potatoes to this one. And this one is going to have a kidney beans and a can of chopped tomatoes and then we'll do coriander to garnish on both but I'll show you the finished product at the end. Nearly there, I've prepped some cheese, I've got some spinach because I'm going to have it with that, some chopped coriander, some chopped spring onions and this is what the keema is looking like. I'm not going to add any peas today, I do normally. It's got little baby potatoes in it and then the chili con carne is here nicely cooking away so that's nearly done actually. I like to cook that for as long as possible but we're getting hungry now and also we've got the rice on the go. So as soon as the rice is done, gone all steamy, as soon as the rice is done, then we're gonna start serving up. Dinner is ready. I'm having some keema served on a bed of spinach just to get my greens in with a bit of coriander sprinkled on top. And then for Ash, he's got chili con carne with some coriander spring onions and cheese served with side of rice. On my spinach, I just wanna show you guys this glaze. It's a white truffle glaze with balsamic vinegar. And I use this in a lot of my salads. Um, it's got a sweetness to it. If you like white truffle, you'll like this. And I just put a little bit of Tabasco on to give it a little bit of extra kick. But what I'll probably do is I'll have this for my dinner as like my main dinner, but I'll probably have a little bit of chili con carne as well. Probably minus the rice, just because I've already got potatoes in here as like my carbs. But serving it on a, a bed of spinach just helps me kind of up my greens and I really haven't eaten enough today. So, bon appetit! Guys, I've got yesterday's leftover chicken mince keema dish that I made and I'm going to turn that into quesadillas using these seeded tortilla wraps. So I'm going to, these we normally keep in the freezer and I'm going to, I've defrosted them. I'm going to heat the first one up on my frying pan. And then I'm going to add my chicken mince, some cheese, and another one, and I'll show you how I do that. So I've spread my chicken evenly all around the tortilla wrap, and I'm now going to add some cheese, which will bind, melt, and bind the top layer and the bottom layer together. So 
now I've just got that on a low heat and let it slowly heat through. So I flipped it over now so you can see this bottom tortilla's gone nice and brown, got a bit of a crisp to it. The bottom tortilla is going to crisp up, crisp up nicely and then I'll cut it up into triangles and it'll be a perfect quesadilla with cheese and chicken mince. So there's your quesadillas guys. Look something like this. I've made a lovely marinade for the chicken that I've now fried, and I'm going to add the ch fried chicken to this marinade. And the way I made this gorgeous, delicious marinade is by adding some garlic. I added about four or five cloves, a chunk of ginger, a little bit of couple of red chilies you don't have to add so much chili or you can just leave it out if you don't like spicy food some apple cider vinegar some onion granules garlic granules some soy sauce I added a premium dark soy sauce some brown sugar some water and then I blitzed up in my neutral bullet now obviously if you don't have any of these flavors just use whatever substitutes you have if you've got light soy sauce or if you've got different vinegar but these are the kind of flavors that you're kind of looking for for the marinade um, and obviously this is the final marinade and now I'm going to add my chicken which is nicely browned off the skin is nice and brown and I'm going to add it into the bowl and coat all of the chicken in this marinade before I add it to the slow cooker. So here is our lovely chicken thighs. The skin is slightly browned. And now I'm gonna add all of these into the lovely marinade that we've pre-prepared and make sure they're completely all coated before they go into the slow cooker. I'm going to deglaze my pan that I used to fry the chicken. I've used a little bit of the marinade. Right now all the chicken is coated nicely with the marinade. I'm gonna add everything, the chicken, the marinade, everything into the slow cooker. That's it, and I'm going to set it to a low temperature and let it cook for six hours with the lid on. It is now done. It's been cooking for around five hours, nice and slow. And as you can see, it is just falling off the bone. I cannot wait to eat this. This looks absolutely delicious. There's some sauce in there as well, so we might serve it with a little bit of bread. And credit to Marion's Kitchen on Instagram and YouTube because there's one of her recipes I was inspired by. This is the final dish. I shredded the chicken up and served it with some green beans and with the marinade I actually took it out of the slow cooker and reduced it down on a in a pan just so it thickens up a little bit and then I've just poured it over the shredded chicken. So this morning I'm going to be creating an Angie Smith style, one of my favourite stylists, fraud shake which apparently tastes like white chocolate. I've never tried it before but I'm going to give it a go. There's the recipe right there and I pretty much have all the ingredients. I have some clear honey, I have almond milk but it's because it's been so hard to get hold of oat milk at the moment in the situation and I have a mango, I have some peanut butter, some water, and then some spinach. So you see pretty healthy ingredients, and apparently all this blended together in my Nutribullet is going to take like a white chocolate shake. So I cannot wait to give that a go. Mm. So that's everything in the Nutribullet, guys, all the ingredients. And now I'm just gonna whiz it up. It does taste pretty good. I've got to give it to her. This is a great recipe and I definitely will be making it again. Just doing some prep for tonight's dinner. I am going to make some vegetarian Gujarati Kitri, which is rice with mung dal lentils, so the small yellow lentils. And I'm going to soak them for probably about four hours because the time is now around two and I'm going to be cooking at six. So I'm going to fill that up with water. I've got some crushed ginger and garlic frozen defrosting here and lots of frozen veg that I've just put onto a plate to defrost. I'm also gonna add some cashew nuts and some potatoes and you can add whatever veg you like really but this is the veg I've got in my freezer and at the moment we're obviously cooking with a lot of kind of what we've got in the house so tonight I'm gonna prepare a vegetable kitchen which I'll show you how I do that, it's really simple. It's just like two or three spices and very, very simple, but a very, very tasty dish. One of my absolute favorites and Lola loves it too. So I've just got my pressure cooker on now. I'm gonna start preparing the food. I'm heating up an equal amount of olive oil and ghee. 
and I've just added my crushed ginger and garlic sizzle away. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of cumin seeds. I'm going to add all my vegetables. I'm going to add a spoon of salt and about half a spoon, teaspoon of turmeric. The vegetables have been sizzling for a few, for about five, six minutes now. And now I'm going to add my lentil and rice mixture with a tiny bit more turmeric in there. I'm just going to put the pressure cooker lid on and let that cook away for about three to four whistles or around 20 to 25 minutes but then I'll also keep the pressure cooker closed for another 20 to 25 minutes to let the remainder of the cooking happen. So guys I've just opened the pressure cooker and I've got yummy yummy kitchi with lots of vegetables and I'm going to serve that with a little bit of ghee and coriander. Morning everyone! So today we are going to make some of our oat and banana muffins which are absolutely delicious and we just make a big batch so that we can have them as snacks or you know just for the breakfast if we're, we don't want anything else or they're just such an easy, quick, tasty, pretty healthy option. So we follow a recipe uh, from YouTube and I'll post that below but I've kind of tweaked it a little bit to my version. So for it you need oats, three eggs, bananas and this is the key thing they want to be as brown as possible so they're nice and sweet so we always make this dish when our bananas are starting to go off chocolate chips which obviously not super healthy but they do give it a lot of flavor and just make them so yummy some milk i add vanilla essence which i really like salt cinnamon and you need some baking powder so a lot of this stuff you might already have in the house so now you have your dry mixture with your oats your baking powder your salt your vanilla essence chopped chip cinnamon so now we're going to add the banana and milk mixture which has been mashed up and stir all that in and then just mix it all together and then we're going to put that into muffin tins and bake it for around 25 minutes so guys make sure you either butter or we just use fry light to in the muffin tin so the muffins don't stick otherwise it is a mission cleaning up your baking tray so i've added the chocolate chips on top and they're ready to go in the oven for about 25 minutes and they're just absolutely delicious they taste more delicious warm i would suggest than kind of when they've cooled down a bit so i just reheat them in the microwave for 30 seconds when i want to have them again. These have just come out of the oven and they look something like this. Really nice. They were in the oven for about 25 minutes on gas mark 7. I'm not sure about the temperature. Um, and the chocolate, chocolate chips all melted on top and all melted inside. And they should come out pretty easy because of the um, stir, the fry light that we sprayed inside. There you go. And they look something like this. And they're absolutely delicious. A nice, healthy alternative to just having your porridge oats with milk in the morning. And they're quite soft inside as well, as you can see, quite moist because of the banana, and they have a nice sweetness as well. So, mm -mm -mm, I'm gonna get stuck in. For tonight's dinner for Ash, we have got chicken livers. Now, I know chicken livers are not to everybody's liking, but if you do like chicken livers, you might enjoy this dish. And I do think they are very good and very good for you, very nutritious and very, very healthy. Um, I'm gonna be using my whole spices and onions, butter, tomato, my spices and a bit of coriander to garnish and serving that with a boiled white rice. So I've just added my whole spices in the olive oil and a little bit of butter. As soon as they've sizzled, I'm gonna add some onions. When your onions are browned a little bit, I've added a chunk of crushed ginger and garlic, a little bit of salt, a little bit of red chili powder, a little bit of turmeric, and quite a bit of ground coriander and ground cumin, because I think that really gives them really nice flavor. And just let your spices cook away and sizzle away in the olive oil to just really bring out their flavor now the spices have had a minute to kind of fry off i'm going to add a little bit of tomato puree and also a little bit of garlic puree we like our garlic in this household and then just stir them in and let them cook out in the oil i'm going to add the chicken livers at this stage
such a nice low heat. So now the chicken livers, I've tested them and they're cooked all the way through. I'm going to add my fresh tomatoes. This is the chicken livers all done. You can see the tomatoes have all kind of wilted away so you can barely see them. It's created a lovely sauce. And they'll be super test tasty, so with a little bit of rice and garnished with a little bit of coriander to finish. Tonight for my dinner, I'm gonna have fried sea bass and I do like very, very crispy skin, so I'll put olive oil and fry it on the skin side on a low heat. Also, and I'm gonna serve that with a butter, lime, coriander and chili dressing all over the fish. And I'm gonna serve that with a side of boiled rice, which I'm gonna put lots of butter in and make it yummy and buttery. So I'm gonna lay the fish away from me, skin side down, and I'll hold it down for a second. I'm just using my glass butter dish to hold them down so they don't curl up. Knob of butter into a bowl. Add some, a little bit of chili and I'm gonna squeeze lemon juice into there. And then all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna whiz it in the microwave for 30 seconds. So the butter will melt and make a yummy, buttery, limey, chili dressing for my sea bass. So there's the sea bass. And all I'm gonna do now is drizzle the butter, lime and chili sauce that I made earlier over the fish, over the butter. And I'm serving it with a side of spinach. So I've got a sea bass with steamed rice and spinach for me and Ash will be having chicken liver, spinach and rice for his dinner tonight. I love the chicken livers too, but I need to finish the sea bass. That's why I'm having sea bass. So guys, tonight I'm going to try a recipe. <laughs> it's just made up by me. It's frozen peas. I've somehow managed to acquire three bags of frozen peas. So I'm trying to use them up. I've put two, two chicken stock cubes, some salt, some spinach, some shallots, all into a pan here and I'm roasting a bulb of garlic in the oven. So as soon as the garlic is done, I'll add that to the soup and then blitz it all up. So guys, this is the roasted garlic. I just put, popped it in some kitchen foil and drizzled some olive oil over the top and it's gone all nice and soft. I'll try and show you with my knife, I can not drop it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna squeeze all this yummy garlic into my soup that is pretty much boiled now it's steaming up my camera <laughs> and this is just a random potato that i had in there i thought i'll just eat it <laughs> you can see here this is the whole pieces of roasted garlic and i'm hoping it's going to add some nice flavor and now we're going to hand blend this into a nice puree texture i'm going to drop a spoon of this soft cheese into it because I just think it will give it a lovely cheesy creamy texture. So I'm just going to serve it up in a bowl and it's all good to go and you can see a little bit of the cream cheese on there. So guys today's dinner is actually one of my favourites and it's going to be chicken thighs with some honey, Sichuan peppercorn, salt, Chinese five spice and some chili flakes and all of this I'm going to marinate the chicken thighs and probably leave them for like five ten minutes and then pop them in the oven for around 35 to 40 minutes and I do suggest using chicken thighs I just find them much more flavorsome and with the skin on you just get that yummy crispy skin but obviously if you're trying to be a little bit healthier you don't need to do it with skin so I'm just going to go ahead and marinate all the chicken in my flavoring. I'm gonna just pop these in the oven now, probably for around 30 to 35 minutes so they're all cooked through. So to go with the chicken thighs, we're gonna have some broccoli, some boiled potatoes, some cauliflower, and some sliced green beans. We've just literally gone into our freezer and fridge and cupboards and just made sure that things are not going off and finishing things off. So you can see the skin is nice and crispy and the chicken is nice and tender and all cooked. So guys, this is the final dinner. I've put some spinach on the bottom here and then just lots of veg on the top with a little bit of butter, salt, garlic powder and then the chicken on the side. So this morning guys, I'm gonna make some deviled eggs and one of my favorite things to do is put a little bit of mild curry powder in there. I don't know, I just really like it like that and obviously this really nice mayonnaise that I've been doing using that's got some garlic and black pepper and then finished off with some smoked paprika. So nice, simple, easy breakfast, but very, very tasty. Um. 
So now to the yolks that I've just taken out, the eggs, I will add a little bit of the, the mayonnaise and also a little bit of my curry powder, like so, and then stir that all together. And then all I do is put a little bit of smoked paprika on all of them to finish. Right guys, this morning I'm going to make a lovely omelette and Spanish omelette style, but I'm just using things that I need to use up. So I've got a bit of cheese that I need to use up. I always like to put a bit of spinach where I can, uh, an orange pepper that I've had for a while, a sweet potato because I've got lots and lots of vine tomatoes and then some leftover cut coriander and spring onions from last night. So I've prepped all my ingredients. This is two large eggs with little salt, chili flakes, garlic powder, which I'll whisk up my spinach, my cheese, which I'll crumble over. And then I've cut the peppers up small, sliced the tomatoes and grated the sweet potato. So I'm gonna start off by adding the sweet potato because that takes the longest to cook. Everything else is pretty much you can eat raw. Now it's all looking soft and cooked through. I'm going to pour my egg, slowly try and balance it around the the whole pan. That'll bind everything together. Now I'm not saying that this will, you know, come away like a full omelette. It might end up being a scrambled egg, but let's let's hope for the best. I'll let it cook on a slow heat now. So guys, this morning's breakfast is all ready. The kind of throw everything in omelette that you've got to use up before it goes off, and a cup of tea in my favourite mug. Act like a lady, think like a boss. For a snack, I'm going to make an Indian yogurt drink, which I absolutely love. And it's, I use Greek yogurt, so it makes it thick and creamy. Then some crushed up cumin seeds, and I use pestle and water to do that. Salt, as per your taste, and then I use coriander to finish. And you need a Nutribullet, or some sort of Nutribullet type thing to make it in. So quick and easy, and so tasty, and a savoury drink, especially on a, a warm day. It's lovely, and you can add ice as well. Mm. Looks something like this, a nice creamy yogurt drink with a bit of coriander and you can just stir that in. And it's a very cooling, refreshing drink for a summer's day.